Are you tired of buying keyboards for your tablet? Well then buy a tablet with the built-in keyboard. Good afternoon morning and welcome to Turbo Tortoise Tech. If you're new here, I'm Reese of the Four Piece Variety of Walkie Triple XL, and I've had my first go with a Chromebook, being the HP 14-inch variant, uh, four gigs of RAM, uh, a 64 gig eMMC, and a dual core Celeron processor. Didn't shout at me that it was going to be a good experience, but this is honestly one of the best multimedia companions I've ever had, and with some absolutely ridiculous battery life and charge rate. Because those components are so much smaller, they run that much more efficiently. And then with some Chrome OS magic thrown on top, you get pretty much the best working battery life you will find, I, I, I think, around in general. And especially at this price point. At this price point, <laughs> I, can, I, will, I will almost put my reputation, what's left of it, on the line against this thing's battery life. That's how good it is. But before we get too carried away, let's first go through what's in the box. Well, you get this really cool 45 watt adapter. Why is it really cool and not just a normal adapter? Well, because this adapter, it does five, nine, 12 and 15 volts. 15 volt, three amp being its peak output uh, for the 45 watt, which is what charges the sucker. But if you're paying attention, I said five volt as well. So you can connect this type C into your phone. So it's a phone charger and your laptop charger all in one because you will barely be using it to charge your laptop then it's like having a built-in phone charger with you on the way, which I really like. I especially like that it's got a Clover plug as well. These are diamond dozen. You can find them pretty much at any IT store across South Africa. So if you do lose this piece, at least not your adapter, you're not up the creek, at least. Then we have the laptop itself. Absolutely gorgeous looking on the back. I love this blue that HP has employed. I think it looks absolutely sick on the back. Really nice chrome book uh, in the top left over there. So you know exactly what it is uh, at first glance. You don't have to guess if that's a normal laptop or like a Windows machine, etc. It's definitely a Chromebook. Moving around the front, you've got a normal 720p webcam, which works pretty well. I tested it on Skype and it looked pretty decent. It does get overwhelmed though if there is too much light. So just be careful of that. If you're sitting in direct sunlight or something, you might just disappear like uh, get right in front of a flashback. It does have two pinhole microphones up top as well. So you don't need a headset for it, but you can connect one into it. Speakers over here alongside the keyboard. The keyboard itself is in a QWERTY layout. Top row is dedicated to special functions that you would need for Chrome operating stuff and for Droid operating stuff because Play Store is a big thing here and a lot of your app access does come through the Play Store. Um, a lot of the apps then run in like tablet mode and you can switch the, between the screen sizes and do back and forward and uh, even go back in menus from the keyboard itself. So you've still got that Droid kind of touchscreen functionality because it's doing Chrome OS with Droid basically plugged into it is the best way I could describe that. Then you get to the touchpad, which is down the bottom of the keyboard, which is absolutely massive. Really big appreciation for that. No real need for right click because it's using the Droid basis uh, systems. So there's no real right click within the Android environment. So it's just a normal single click. It's got a decent audio profile to it. Little bit bendy on the uh, bottom right corner compared to this side. This side does go a little bit further in and bend into the frame more the, a bit more than I would like. Um, but the rest of it is pretty good. The only key that makes any real noise, I mean, if I smash these, um, not much audio. The only one that makes a bit of noise is the space bomb, which is traditional. The rest of the frame is pretty sturdy. It doesn't have too much flex in it. The monitor lift, the, the lid lift, lid lift, there we go. The lid lift test, where you check from one corner to make sure that the frame stays uniform so that if, if you are doing this a lot, that it doesn't warp and bend the screen and the screen's not going to crack. But in general, please, guys, just lift from the middle of the laptop like that. That's kind of what it's supposed to do. This thing has an incredibly strong hinge. Exhibit A can basically pick itself up. Um, it does go almost flat as well, which is really important because this is where we get to the physical sort of, not defects, but changes I would like to see. The monitor itself, it's pretty good. The colors and stuff aren't bad as long as you're sitting dead on. Brightness is also pretty good, just 
yeah, it's got old TN viewing angle issue vibes. Not as extreme as some of the old notebooks, but definitely could have been improved. Um, and then the speaker mounts inside of here do tend to rattle. Funnily enough, only with spoken like uh, vocal stuff. It can play back music, it can play back bass stuff, perfectly fine. But as soon as I put on someone speaking with a sort of wide range mic, like what I've got over here, or any other sort of, you know, permanent sort of YouTuber, someone that's generally working with wide range microphones and stuff, it does tend to rattle in the side of the notebook. But that's it. Those are the only sort of physical things that I noticed that I didn't um, really like inherently like. I love this plastic brushed uh, plastic bottom though because it's going to be very resistant to scratches. It's got nice rubberizing on top and the bottom, basically the entire way across. So it's not going to move around on the desk or do anything weird like that. So in general, for a five grand notebook, the build quality is pretty damn good. And I mean, look at how thin that is. Just, just, I mean, look at, well, you can see. Speaking of, let's go through the ports because there aren't many, but they are very useful. So on the right hand side, you have your headphone jack behind the power, the first power slash type C input, and then an SD card reader. because you can see where the mind is a little bit with this notebook. And then you have on the right hand side, you've got another type C slash charging input, and then a type A USB. So the idea with this is, is to be a little bit of a multimedia companion is what I sort of assumed. And then I had a look around at some of the material and stuff on this notebook after having used it to make sure I sort of checked everything out. And it was exactly as I presumed with that card reader and with the type A on the other side, you can then capture a lot of stuff directly to your Chromebook. And then from a Chromebook, it's linked to your Google Drive. So yeah, 64 gig EMMC, it's not a lot, but five gigs worth of pictures you could easily store it on the book. And then as soon as you get on Wi-Fi, you can easily sync it with your with your uh, drive. So 29 Rand a month gets you 200 gig drive. So it's not a huge expense per year to have permanent cloud storage. And you can get up to like two TB, I believe, on the Google Drive. So yeah, there's, pl <laughs> there's plenty of storage space. Now, the thing with this OS and with the software is it really has been built around the Google App Suite. So you've got a built-in YouTube player, which is really, really nice, works absolutely flawlessly. It's basically the same as what you'd experience on most mobile platforms. You've got your Play Store over there, you've got your Google Meets as well, and then you've got your Google App Suite. So your, you know, Google Sheets and even spreadsheets and stuff like that, your doc processing and, and your PowerPoint sort of processing, etc. You've got your full uh, presentation suite, etc. In all of that is accessible. That's the idea is to make that as accessible as possible. This is a web app running type of system with a small amount of local storage, which you can actually work in ways that you maybe wouldn't be expecting. So I managed earlier to download uh, one of the videos uh, uh, that I made for myself and Latches, which I actually have right here on the start bar on the bottom right over here, which I can then literally just double click and it will start playing back the video like just like that with its built-in players. You can put in VLC, obviously from the Play Store, but anything on the Play Store is accessible as well. And it will either run in a phone type orientation or a tablet type orientation. You can full screen some apps. There is some compatibility issues. Obviously with doing that and changing their resolution where the buttons and stuff would line up. But like I said, you can either run it in tablet or in phone mode. And then in tablet mode, for the most part, it runs in a window like this. So you're gonna use about 80% of the screen to run those applications. Then because it's got Play Store access, you can do a whole bunch of cool things like get PS emulators even, Game Boy emulators, etc. So you're not just locked into the platform from a perspective of, I can only use the Droid applications themselves um, or your games that are available. I could then put on like an emulator, use the USB, put the drives onto, put those ROMs onto the local storage and then play it from an emulation on the station. But this thing's absolute best environment is honestly as a multimedia partner because it can play back YouTube and I played back like a whole bunch of Crunchyroll and stuff through this notebook and I basically battery tested it to 10 hours. I did it twice because I actually couldn't believe it off my first run. With Wi-Fi going, with it streaming, just doing its thing, 10 hours. 
worth of streaming and playback. So it's using Wi-Fi as well as video to get that. The speed tests look good as well, as you'll see from the live one that I did. Um, it's basically using the entirety of my 500 meg line. So even though it's a five grand notebook, it's got very good Wi-Fi built into it. Can't see the exact speed and stuff that it's connecting at, uh, but it's fast enough. More than fast enough. Uh, I doubt uh, you will need much more than that. So where I see this thing being like really, really good is like on the go, if you've got your own 4G or you're constantly moving between places that have decent Wi-Fi, it's gonna be absolutely perfect for that. If you yourself are sitting at home in the dark and you want something to just play back videos and movies and stuff and maybe do some light work on it, have access to your emails or any web app. So WhatsApp, web, etc., also runs all really nicely and natively off of this because it's got standard Chrome. As you think of Chrome, that's how the Chrome works on here. So any web-based app can run basically from the notebook absolutely flawlessly, especially because of how efficient this Chrome OS is. It's like I said, it's got almost no resources, but it feels completely fluid. It's like, it's like a tablet on steroids. It's the best way I could sum it up to you. This is taking the Android tablet and just dialing everything up to 11, building in some of the, you know, native Google apps into the experience and just making it really fluid while doing it. So I think they've done an exceptional job. Um, the only thing for me at this, the only like, I think deal breaker for me, I, I, even is a strong word, but the monitor on here really is like letting down the team. The rest of it does feel just a little bit better than the panel that they put in here, but they are trying to keep the cost down, which I understand to get to the price point and stuff. They've still done an incredibly good job. They've made a very attractive, very lightweight device that you can just take with you on the go and like basically never have to charge. And when you do, it goes from zero to 80% in an hour, in an hour. Full charge is like an hour and 30 minutes because it's got to slow down at the top of the cell to make sure it doesn't overvolt it um, and overcharge it and then ruin the battery. So, phew, they've, yeah. Uh, I like this. I like this a lot. I'm actually genuinely considering getting one just like this for myself, just for while I'm out and about and on the go, so that I have something that is literally like it's like carrying a stack of papers. It's so light. I can make it airborne and catch it like absolutely perfectly like that. Like that's how light this notebook is. Anywho, that is all I have for you on the HP Chromebook. If you have enjoyed this review, please do hit us up with a like and subscribe. And I will see you on the flip side. My sight gets blurry, pushing back the tears Should take a leap of faith and faith